I'm Peter Kyu Huang. Um, I work with Gongam Human Rights Law Foundation in South Korea. It's a nonprofit, full time public interest lawyers group in, in South Korea. Uh, I work for the uh, human rights of migrants, refugees, and issues concerned with Korean companies overseas and uh, uh, something to do with, I mean, everything to do with uh, international advocacy or UN advocacy. Thank you. Uh, we had recently some issues um, or cases or decisions by Supreme Court and uh, UN bodies. One was the, uh, uh, the, the issue was concerned with uh, undocumented migrants' right to trade union. And uh, the Supreme Court actually made a final judgment last week saying that um, undocumented migrant workers, they also have um, right to labor unions. And there was also issue of um, HIV AIDS test for foreign language teachers from outside of Korea. And there was a decision by the the Committee on uh, Against Raci Racial Discrimination of UN saying that this test is against, I mean, violates the, the uh, Convention on the, the Racial Discrimination. And there was also, actually this week, uh, during this UN Human Rights Council, the Special Rapporteur on Racism actually uh, released this uh, report based on her mission to South Korea last year. Um, covering a number of issues, um, including migrant workers, uh, women migrants, migrant children, um, saying that there is a, a kind of pre prevalent uh, 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 xenophobia and racism in South Korea. Actually, I've been working on this uh, the, the issue of migrants' rights uh, for more than a decade. And uh, during these years, I mean, uh, there was an improvement, at least uh, in terms of uh, legal system and institution, but the the perception of the public and uh, the issue concerned with xenophobia and um, uh, racial racial discrimination is is getting momentum. Um, so it's a, a big, more and more big problem in South Korea, and even the government. The problem is actually with the most uh, serious problem is with the government. Um, because they have this like like five year uh, plan for foreigners in South Korea, and they are saying that um, before, I mean, they only focused on human rights of migrants, but now they need. They say they need a balanced approach, which means um, um, migrants themselves have problems, and um, I think it is. Uh, it, they make it. Uh, they, they argue that, I mean, they, they insist that these migrant workers have problems and uh, they want to address that issue um, during this, um, I mean, in their uh, 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 basic plan for these migrants. And um, even the media concerned with like uh, crimes of migrants, um, they are kind of mis doing kind of kind of misreading, misleading uh, um, coverage of uh, some migrant, migrant workers uh, crimes and so, I mean, it's, it's a very serious problem in South Korea. Well, um, on the face of it, they insist that they are pursuing the multiculturalism uh, in South Korea, in, in this society. But the problem is, I mean, even though this uh, xenophobia and racism is getting momentum, the, the government doesn't admit that there is actually racism or xenophobia in South Korea. They're saying there's some discrimination, so we are, we're going to tackle this issue by, you know, the, the spreading out this multiculturalism. But it's very nationalistic and uh, very kind of exclusive, excluding all these migrant workers um, or other temporary workers from outside. Persons with disabilities and uh, LGBTI, obviously, and uh, actually for me, uh, from last year, I've been working for victim families of several ferry disaster, uh, which happened last April last year, and uh, where uh, more than 200 uh, high school students died. 
And uh, the problem is this cell ferry disaster. I mean, the, the victim families, they are pursuing the truth. I mean, they want a thorough investigation. And whereas the, the government is very reluctant to go on with this thorough investigation. So we are struggling. I mean, the, the families are struggling for more than one year. Well, the problem is this, uh, the, the president is not, you know, it's not just uh, that she is a conservative, but uh, she, she doesn't have uh, uh, any will or ability to listen to others. So it's not an issue of progressive or conservative. So at least, I mean, even some president is conservative, if he or she is ready to listen, it will make a huge difference. And, um, well, for next uh, presidential election, it's not quite, I mean, we, are, we cannot be sure about the results because uh, not just the ruling party, but uh, the opposition party is not that competent. And they don't kind of um, actually getting the, the, the um, trust or confidence from people. So we have this um, problem with all these politicians and all, all those parties. Well, I just felt like doing it. <laughs> I mean, I, I like my work, and uh, that's, this is what, what I wanted. And I mean, I, I studied law, especially I, I, I studied for bar exam to you know, do work like this and to be a human rights lawyer. And I mean, when in South Korea, when you, if you ask uh, uh, like, you know, first grade grade in law school, you know, about their future, they're going to say, most of them are going to say, uh, they want to be, you know, human rights lawyer. Um, so when people ask why why did you become a human rights lawyer, I say, well, that, that's that's what most you know law school students think. And I didn't change my mind, but others changed their minds. That's the difference. Well, actually, even today, I mean, uh, this afternoon. Uh, we had this uh, assembly or demonstration by uh, several ferry victims. And uh, th actually, it was a press conference. And then um, they, they collected these uh, signatures from, um, you know, people to, you know, to make a certain kind of um, argument against uh, the, the government uh, measures. And uh, they were actually, we, I mean, these families were um, supposed to kind of uh, submit uh, this petition to the Blue House, and um, the police actually blocked the way, and we were like um, uh, there for five, 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 six hours. Um, you know, actually, for me, actually educating these uh, policemen that they they are kind of doing this illegal, you know, blockage uh, against these victim families. But I kind of um, I was shouting at these <laughs> policemen. Actually, so some lawyers, uh, they were summoned by the police for their actually kind of, uh, their, uh, you know, you know, attempt to actually protect these uh, victims. Well, the problem is um, in the last almost uh, seven years, eight years, I think it's, it's getting uh, worse and worse, especially not just about, you know, civil rights, but also social rights. Um, the problem we have with this um, you know, uh, contract workers outsourcing with, with the labor, precarious uh, labor, and all these uh, uh, groups of um, marginalized groups, like, like persons with disabilities or LGBT. I mean, there is strong kind of um, uh, movement against these um, uh, uh, marginalized, marginalized people. So it's just so kind of uh, this uh, phenomenon of phobia is getting momentum and it's getting more prevalent. So it's, it's very difficult. I mean, it's not just, you know, uh, I'm a lawyer, but uh, it's not an issue of just changing a law, but it's changing the society, changing, changing the perception of the public. So we, we have a lot of problems. Well, actually, I mean, you don't have to have a, like a big kind of a dream or, you know, uh, you know, you don't have to have what you call calling, but if, if it's if you feel like it, I mean, uh, if you want to do it, you can do it. I mean, so, but the the only problem human rights lawyers 
space uh, is we just have just one body and you know 24 hours a day. There are unlimited market, unlimited open market for human rights work. And um, so if you want to do something, the work will be there for you. Thank you.